Today is May 1st, and it was a big day for you in Carpinteria. Susan Jordan, tell us what happened out there at the paddle out. Oh, it was just a terrific event, hundreds of people. Um, it was a paddle out uh, for No on Measure J and to protest uh, Venico, uh, the oil company's efforts to greatly expand offshore oil drilling from, a, from on land. Um, so they want to drill all these new wells right adjacent to you know the, the bluffs there and to a residential neighborhood. It's it's, but the the truly telling thing about what they're trying to do there that is so terrible and it sets a horrible precedent for the entire California coastline, is that instead of going through the normal regulatory process, that's right, they refuse to complete their EIR, and they have put a ballot on the initiative. Uh, sorry, an initiative on the ballot. Um, which basically takes away the city's authority to deny the project. It would force approval of the project. It allows them to change the project after the fact. Um, and, it, and if there's, what it also says is that there's, if there's anything in Carpinteria's general or specific plan that would hinder the approval of this project, this initiative overrides it. It's, it's just one of the most terrible things I've ever seen an oil company do. Um, in, an, in an attempt to get around the regulatory process. Okay, so on the June 8th ballot is this Measure J in Carpentria. Right. But also, your name is on the ballot. That's um, right. And Susan Jordan is running for State Assembly. Mm -hmm. And I know the environment and fighting oil is one of your topics. What else can you tell us about your record and um, protecting the coast. Let's start there. Well, I founded the uh, California Coastal Protection Network, and that's the nonprofit through which I work at a grassroots level with communities up and down the state. And for me, I always take what my focus has been is taking on what I consider to be precedent setting projects and giving these communities their voice, helping them because many times they don't have the resources to hire attorneys or experts mm -hmm. um, to get their message out and to fight back. And that, that's where I come in. Um, as a nonprofit, and I work with them to stop projects. Uh, the two biggest ones, or the most recent ones that I've worked on, were stopping the construction of the LNG terminal off Oxnard. That fight was huge, and many components and many you know stakeholders working together. But my organization raised over a million dollars for that fight. Um, it took four and a half years. It was my sole focus for four and a half years. And we were successful and ultimately convinced the governor to veto that project, which in the beginning he deeply wanted. The last project that I did before I made the decision to run was uh, working to stop the approval of a toll road uh, through San Onofre State Park. Interesting, an Orange County agency with a transportation problem uh, sought to put their toll road through a state park in San Diego. <laughs> it's kind of like Santa Barbara saying to San Luis Obispo, you don't mind if we solve our traffic problem by putting something through Montana del Oro. And it really okay. t totally gutted, it went right through the middle of the park. Uh, and it would have really destroyed a park that was founded by, or created by, both Nixon and Reagan. Ah. Yeah. So. And there's a surfing element in there too. I worked for a youth newspaper in Santa mm -hmm. Barbara, and you would think, you know, these teenagers wouldn't be paying attention to a surf uh, spot in another part of the state, but they all knew about it. Oh. That Trestles was part of that equation, right? Trestles was uh, the birthplace of surfing, pretty much, and it's it's iconic for Californians. And yes, that was going to be deeply affected by it because it was going right through the watershed. So that whole spot is is thought to you know have that kind of surf that it has because of the way the watershed feeds the beach and the cobbling. And it's it gets a little technical, but it's a very deeply loved spot. So if you talk to any surfer up and down the state, they know that fight. Right. And there were lots of them out in the water today. I was thrilled because Mark Massara, who, uh, you know, renowned environmentalist, renowned surfer, is in the Smithsonian, you know, for that. I have been writing stories of, as a journalist about you and Mark Massara for, I think, 15 years now. Right. Uh, it's been a long time, so it was really nice to see him today. Oh, it, it was tremendous. And he went out and, and he um, did the paddle out the way Laird Hamilton does the paddle out, which is standing up. And it was a perfect day for that for that event. It was. So tell us about your environmental um, endorsements. I think the Sierra Club endorsed you? The Sierra Club did endorse me. The California uh, League of Conservation Voters endorsed me. That's I, huge. And I have yeah. the endorsements of almost, I, I would say, the, the top environmental leaders in California have all endorsed me. They don't endorse in terms of the organization because that's a nonprofit 
Right. Five hundred one C three. Can't do that. <laughs> um, but obviously, they have endorsed me. And Mark was one of my first big, big supporters. And the, I think the challenge in Sacramento is really getting a strong environmental leader in. It's very, very hard. There's a lot of special interests there right. that don't want someone like me there, and they're doing their, their best to see that it doesn't happen, but I'm determined. And you're also endorsed by the Union of Domestic Workers, mm -hmm. United Domestic Workers. United Work, Domestic Workers. Who are here today to help you in a big uh, walk for Susan Jordan. Mm -hmm. I think there was about uh, 20 to 30 of them here, and right. so enthusiastic. Very, yeah, they're very excited and engaged, and I think that's the other thing for me. People ask me why I'm running, and what I say is it's not really about me, it's about the people. It's about the people who need a voice. I have a, a social, a master's in social work, and I'm very, I've always been taught and raised, you know, for public service and to help people who are less fortunate. They do some of the hardest work caring for the elderly, the uh -huh. sick, and the disabled. Mm -hmm. And the governor in this last budget cycle cut their program in a way that was unconscionable and I think unethical because they really are affecting the, the, the neediest in society. Uh, and he's trying to go further. He's even threatened to completely eliminate that program. And what he doesn't understand, it seems to me, is that every time he cuts a program like this, he cuts a job. And then he places this vulnerable person at greater risk. And so I feel that it's my job to go to Sacramento to be a champion for these people. I mean, I, I really want to take care of the people both in the district and in the state and the neediest as well. Well, I think one of your biggest challenges, Susan, is that you're not a professional politician who's run over and over and over. How are you catching up with all of that? Um, well, you know, it's been an amazing experience, and I, I have met so many wonderful people in this. And what I'm finding is that people are really tired of professional politicians. Mm -hmm. they, they feel that they're not about the people, that they're mm -hmm. about themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it really is a problem because what you're finding as a result of term limits you know, if you look at term limits and the impact it's had, okay, you've got 80 assembly seats, but there's only 40 Senate seats. So many times for people who want to move up the food chain and who see politics as their career, then it's all about how do I get to that next place? And it's not about the policy. For me, you need to be about the policy and doing what's right. And sometimes that means taking strong decisions that may not be the best for you as you attempt to move up. But that's why it's so important. And for me, running for the first time, I really, you know, this is my public service. I've had a successful business career. I've done nonprofit coastal work, uh, protection work for the last 15 years. And I don't need a successful career. I've had two successful careers. <laughs> and for me, this is really about public service. Well, I think if you get elected, you'll be successful in that, too. Yeah. So, Thanks. Well, thank you. And thank you, David, for videotaping us today. Thank you.